In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Until the day of Pentecost, my brothers and sisters in Christ, until the day of Pentecost, the church in Jerusalem was simply a handful of scared and faithless people until the day of Pentecost. But the coming of the Holy Spirit on that day transformed those people, changed their lives forever. They received power. They received the fire of the Holy Spirit and later that same day in Jerusalem from a handful of faithless scared Christians thousands more believed in Christ Jesus and were baptized in the Holy Spirit. And later when St. Paul came to a city called Ephesus, Asia Minor. When he came there to Ephesus, he asked the Christians, he thought they were Christians, he asked them, have you all received the Holy Spirit? Do you know what they replied? What are you talking about? Who's the Holy Spirit? Now these were the Christians, quote unquote, of Ephesus. They had been drawn to Christianity, they had been drawn to Jesus as Lord, but they had not yet understood what this whole idea is of the Holy Spirit. So then St. Paul went ahead and he catechized them. He spent some time there, he instructed them, and then he confirmed them, baptized them, into the Christian faith, placing his hands upon them and invoking the Holy Spirit to send the power of the Holy Spirit upon those Christians. Now there was just a tiny group of people. And yet, when Paul came and told them about the Holy Spirit, it was like a bonfire, a flame was lit under them. And that little group of people became the great Christian church of Ephesus. Believe it or not, there are many people today who have not heard about the Holy Spirit. Or if they have, they've seen the name, maybe they hear the priest say something about Holy Spirit, okay? But that is the extent of it. They have not yet felt the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives. But the power of the Holy Spirit, my brothers and sisters, exists. It is real. It is there waiting for us to accept it and to use it. As we know, power must have a channel for it to be released. Energy must have a medium, correct? The medium of light is what? The light bulb. The medium of music is what? The voice or instruments. And the medium of God's spirit is you. You and I, his people, because the Holy Spirit works through people. Who would ever think that you look at, remember in the old days, maybe some of you remember, we used to heat up our kitchen stoves with wood, coal, any of you remember that? Okay, I remember it. Coal, we used to have delivery of coal to the house. Imagine that. Now, we, now we just turn on the stove, the gas comes. Okay, so we used to heat our homes on the kitchen stove with coal or wood, all right? 
Now the coal, when you look at the coal, what's it look like? Nothing. Pieces of black something. And you touch them, there, there's no heat there, nothing at all. Until you place a flame next to the coal and then what happens to the coal? What happens to your grills when you have a, 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 a you're going to grill some, some food? Okay? It becomes a flame. It bursts into a wonderful flame. It gives out heat. It gives out light. And it gives out power. There are still many plants, by the way, in the United States, still powered by coal. You know that, huh? Okay. So sometimes, when we meditate a little bit, we think back and we, we kind of wonder, gee, you know, Father Nick said some nice words last Sunday in church, but I don't feel it. I don't feel it. I feel, as a matter of fact, I feel just the opposite. I feel powerless. And sometimes, when we think of the Christian church, sometimes we say, what's wrong with the church? Why isn't the church more power to do things, to preach the gospel to all the people of the earth? So we need to realize that deep down us and in the church, there is the power. There is the power of the Holy Spirit, but we must be open to it. Remember that. Remember what he said before. To have a light, you need a light bulb. To have music, you need a beautiful Russian choir. Okay? And so, for the church to have power, we, the church, must accept it, believe in it, realize it, and make it our own. Today, on this beautiful feast day of Pentecost, and by the way, all Christians are celebrating Pentecost today, our Catholic friends as well, and our Protestant friends as well, celebrate Pentecost. But on this beautiful day of Pentecost, we need to pray, my brothers and sisters, that what happened 2,000 years ago can happen again now, can happen again today, can happen here in this little church of St. Michael in Ketuit. May the Holy Spirit come upon each and every one of us as we kneel down pretty soon now for the service of prayer of Pentecost. May that Holy Spirit that came 2,000 years ago and continues to come to those who are open to it, may He come and live inside of us to give us the same power of the Holy Spirit and the same fruits. You know how you will know if you have any bit of Holy Spirit inside of you? Anyone know? Okay. It, it tells us, the book tells us, you will know if you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, if you have some of these gifts. What are they? Love. Number one. Joy. Are you a joyous Christian? You have the Holy Spirit. Peace. Do you have peace? Do you love peace? Do you want peace? Patience, that's a gift of the Holy Spirit. Kindness, how about goodness? How about faithfulness? How about gentleness? Are you gentle? Do you remember when you were a kid? Hmm? Are you gentle like a child sometimes? And do you practice self-control? If you have those gifts, you have the Holy Spirit.